It's a, it's a, it's a vibe, and it is I, Kadara Roshan, your mindset and manifestation coach. Again, this is coaching, not therapy, because coaching is about action and next level transformation. And today, we're going to go very deep and make a quantum leap into supporting you on healing the inner child. I feel like and in my own personal experience, as well as those that I've worked with, the thing that's blocking most people from being creative, from dreaming big, from expressing themselves in this very inner childlike way, the version of you that was always laughing and smiling and having fun and actually envisioned these grandiose things is the fact that there's a part of our inner child that is unhealed and we're still holding on to it. Now, there is the aspect of, you know, doing the deep inner child work and actually understanding, ah, what are the things that happened to me as a kid? This today is for those that have done that deep work or are doing the deep work to actually understand what the things are. And we're actually going to go on and express how to release it. There is a way to release these things, and I tend to do so most through journaling. And this aspect right now is going to be actually writing a letter to your inner child and expressing how you truly feel and allowing yourself to release whatever it is you're still holding on to that no longer serves you. This isn't going to be easy for everyone. It definitely wasn't easy for me the first two times I did it. And I'm saying that because I actually got to be really honest with myself and it wasn't so easy to let go of these things that no longer serve me because deep down inside I felt, but these are the things that made me who I am today. So what, did I, what I ended up doing is I went in my journal and I would recommend first taking out a journal or writing something down. I say to write it down because it's very easy for people to just want to type things out. But when we write something, we're, we're channeling something from our mind all the way past our throats where we're not speaking it in the moment into our arms, into a pen, onto a piece of paper. And this paper is made from Gaia. And in doing so, I'm inscribing and writing or scripting out what it is I'm feeling, and then I can see it on the piece of paper. You know, I, I don't get to be perfect. I can see it, I can cross things out, and I can add to it or remove whatever doesn't make me feel like, okay, that's not how I really felt. I just feel like when we're looking at a screen, our minds tend to zone out, and we start thinking of all the other things we see on screens. Write out all of the things you know happened to you as a child. And if you're able to, write out the fullest expression of how those experiences made you feel. Me personally, one of the first traumatic things was never meeting my father as a child. Uh, didn't meet my father until I was 13 years old. And, and I did get to communicate with him. And he would write me letters. And every year there was some excuse of why I couldn't meet him. So there was a part of my inner child that felt unloved and unworthy enough to even meet my father. I would cry at night like this this person doesn't even want to meet me. Like, am I that terrible of a person? I was writing that down. Am I that terrible of a person? My father doesn't even want to meet me. And am, am, was I that bad of a baby that my father didn't want to be there at my birth? Didn't want to be there at my birth. Never wanted to meet me. Would write me every once in a while, with phone call every once in a while, this person desired no connection with me, the person that, you know, brought me into this world, supported that process, no connection. So as you're writing these things down, as I just said, go through the fullest expression. Don't just be like, ah, my mother or father or whatever never loved me. Be like, I, I felt right out, I felt like my parents never loved me, which I don't understand because I love them very dearly. How could they not love me? This hurt me. It made me cry. It made me feel less than. It, it led to me listening to dark music and at one point not wanting to be here anymore. You get to write these things out. Too many people are suppressing how they really, really feel. And you can't release something unless you feel it all. You know, you, you can keep cutting the, the top of the weed or the plant above the earth. But if you don't get to the root of what you really feel or whatever the root of the problem is, it's just going to keep growing back over and over. And then it's going to start to connect with other plants and other trees and things in your life. It's going to impact their own growth 
or poison them or be a cancer to them and cause them to either grow slowly or die or stay stagnant. So write out all the things you know you're still feeling from your childhood. And after you do that, then continue on with what I'm about to share. I, I, and I really mean that. Don't, don't listen to all of this and then be like, I want to hear it all first before I do the thing. If you truly desire to release whatever it is, pause now. Do this. Like, go deep. If it takes you 30 minutes or an hour, it takes you a whole day, pause this now. Like, pause and give yourself the time to do that. If you can't take the time to write out what's really hurting you in your life, what excuse do you have? What's more important than healing? Your job is not more important than healing. Your friends are not more important than healing. In many cases, your partner is not more important than healing. Your partner will get to experience a happier and higher version of yourself when you do this work. So pause, do the thing, and then come back. And when you're back, or if you've already done these exercises, and if you have already done the exercise, do it again. Write it out again. Unless you did it like in the last you know, week or something. If you have done that exercise, I invite you to then sit down with a bigger piece of paper or still your same journal, and you're going to write a letter to your inner child. And this is, this is essentially a goodbye letter. And then what you're going to do, and I'm going to explain what I did in mine, basically. What you're doing is you're going to tell your inner child, hey, you know, I want to thank you for all these things you did. And I'm also letting go of you because that version of us no longer serves me and the things I'm committed to in the future. Many of you know what you actually desire in your life. You know what you're calling in. You, you're manifesting. You desire to manifest. You're shifting your mindset. You're even listening to this because a part of you is like, okay, I want to manifest a specific person. I want to manifest a happier relationship. I want to manifest children. I want to manifest uh, success. I want to manifest a specific career. I want to manifest a new house and a car. You know all the things you desire. This work of healing and reparenting and releasing your inner child actually supports that. So when you're writing your letter, and I will give you the scripting thing because I've done it so many times that I really remember it. Uh, start out your letter and write dear, young, and then whatever your name is. And I'll do all of this from my own perspective. And I was like, dear young Kadara, I want to thank you for everything you went through and still choosing life. Your father abandoned you when you were less than a month old. Never wanted to see you. Your mother abused you because of your father, because you looked like him and he didn't pay child support. Your stepfathers abused you because they were alcoholics and very aggressive. You were sexually assaulted when you were 11 years old by a group of women. And I really want to thank you for going through all that stuff and still choosing life. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here today. For me, that was like the first paragraph. That's the part where you get to be the fullest expression of yourself and just thank you. You're literally just thanking the inner child. You know, I understand that you trusted all of those people. You loved these people. And you didn't get back what you gave. And that's okay. Because we're working on that now. That was the next paragraph. The final paragraph tends to be the harder paragraphs for, for some people because this is where the release comes. With that, and this is what I wrote, with that all being said, I need you to know I love you and and I wrote and in big letters, capital letters, I'm releasing you. This version of us no longer serves us. The rejection, the pain, the unloved, the unworthiness, list out all the things, the, the adjectives of the words, no longer serve us on our journey to 
and then you would write out what it is you're calling in, manifesting a life partner or a specific person that is going to be our twin flame and the mother of our children because we're going to buy a house together and have land and go camping. I also want you to know I started drawing again because the last time we painted or drew was through you. So I'm buying a paint set and I'm going to start painting or buying a pencil and I'm going to start drawing or sketching or whatever it may be. I, I started dancing again as well. This is the point where you start telling yourself all the actionable things like the aligned committed actions you're going to start taking because you're releasing this version of yourself. Love, Godard, that's how I ended it. And I took that paper and I went out into, at the time I was in Arizona, uh, I went out into the middle, no, I've done it in Germany. So at this point, this specific one, I went out in the, the, the desert in Arizona and I've also been out in the forest in Germany. I took a glass dish because I was going to burn it. So you have the option of once you're, because you're going to read this letter out loud. So after you're done reading the letter, you're either going to burn it or bury it. I chose to burn it because I felt like fire is just, it's a part of me. Fire is in my life as, as an Aquarian. Um, went out into the forest, went out into the desert, both those times. Read the letter out loud. I was like, dear young Kadara. And I said everything I needed to say. And I say out loud, not that I was yelling at the top of my lungs, but I said it aloud. Um, and I got to that part where I was saying goodbye and I started crying. And I took the letter, folded it up very neatly, and I burned it. And, and it was a slow burn. I don't pour like tons of gasoline and try to get the process over with. Burn it slowly. Let it burn slowly. And it burned slowly. And right after it finished, right after your letter is done burning it, right after you've buried it, you have the opportunity to let out a primal roar. You can do this in your house. If you're going to do it in your house, don't suppress your primal roar. Roar and get out whatever you need to get out. Like if you need to be like, Rah! like let it out. Like it doesn't matter what your neighbors or, or your partner thinks. This is for you. Because if you can't do it for yourself, who else is going to do it for you? So burn the letter, bury the letter, let out your primal roar, and then begin the next level of your life. Now, in my experience, when I had done it in uh, Arizona, something powerful happened uh, because I, I wrote the letter, burned it, did the primal roar, and I felt like a big piece of me was missing. Like I, I literally felt like I lost 30% of myself because I released all those memories finally. And that 30% made up a lot of who I was because that was the root. And everything else was connected to it. And I happened to take a trip to Denver, Colorado. I was walking down the street and I happened to walk by this comic book store. And I don't ever go into stores like that. Because spirit was like, literally, my spirit, intuition, God's so universe was like, go in the store. I'm like, I'm not, not going to buy anything. There's no point for me to go in there. Spirit's like, go in the store. I'm like, all right. So I go in the store. And, and it's, a, it's a longer store. It's not like a wide, like rectangle. It's just a long store. And I walk in and about... 20 meters, 20 yards, whatever, in front of me, I see on the desk this figure about this big, and it was a baby Grogu from The Mandalorian. And I saw this baby Grogu, and it was smiling. And the first thing that happened is my heart smiled. And I was like, that is what the happiest version of my inner child looks like. So I went over there, and I adopted it. I don't like saying bye. I adopted this amazing creature being took it home back to Austin uh, later back to Austin and it was so magical and that young baby Grogu is still with me today like I still have the baby Grogu in my apartment in Austin um, and every time I look at this young baby Grogu it always reminds me of that I did the work that I released I invite you to find something 
that supports that space that you may feel like you're missing so that every time you see it, make and I say make it something big. Like you can make it something small. It could be a crystal. I needed it. I desired it to be something big so that every time I see it and it's, it's sitting on top of my bookcase, that way I always see it no matter where I'm in the house. Every time you see it, you remember this day that you did the work and why you did it. I don't, I don't need to like have my why written down and posted somewhere. I just see the baby grows when I'm like, I remember why I did that. So I could smile and it reminds me to smile. So remember to smile, take your time with this work and understand that this, this is the inner work. This is the work that gets to get you unstuck. That gets to re spark your creativity that gets to reignite your flame. This is the thing that makes a difference to and how you even parent. If you decide to have children, because you're going to remember and release the things that didn't serve you. So you're going to know, ah, these are things I also don't want to do with my children currently or future children or whatever it may be for you. And if you don't have children, if you have fur babies, and this impacts your relationship with your partner, your play, your love, your joy, this impacts everyone you meet, this impacts your business, this impacts your soul and your spirit, this is, impacts the music and the dance that you have all around you. This is the inner work. This is the next level transformation. And less than 20 minutes to explain it. Like this is in some long webinar or seminar that you had to go to. This is less than 20 minutes of some powerful, deep quantum leaping to heal. And yes, it may take you more than 20 minutes to write it all out. Just imagine, because I, I did this about three years ago. Just imagine taking two hours out of your day that would impact the next 20, 30, 40 years of life. Like what I did that day is going to impact for me the next 100 years. I plan on living for a very long time. So it's going to impact the next 100 years. It's just I am here three years now and I realize how much happier I am. And I'm so grateful I did it, which is why I'm even sharing this. I'm grateful three years ago I took two hours out of my busy life, quotation mark, to do this work because I know where I was before three years ago because that was like 20, 30 years. That was like t over 20 years of my life. The 20 years, the 20 plus years of my life before that moment were terrible. And here I am now, super happy, excited, expansive, glowing, and I'm still learning. It's still a journey for me. I learn stuff every day from myself, from my wife, the interactions I have with all of you. I'm still learning. It's just so much easier to deal with because I took out the biggest domino in my life. I always go for the bigger domino, meaning what domino can I knock down that will knock down all the other ones? So many, many blessings to you on your journey of writing this letter to your inner child and releasing the things that no longer serve you. Thank you for being with me in this space. Mm, deep breath in together. Hold it at the top. Reprogram your nervous system for love and joy in the fullest expression of yourself. Audible exhale. Exhale. Ah. We need one more together. Deep breath in. Hold it at the top. Allowing your nervous system, your soul, your spirit to just be present in this moment because you are doing the work and we are celebrating ourselves. So from the energy of celebration, audible exhale, exhale. Ah. Ooh, ah. Let's get it. Let's go. Ah. You got this. You're already doing great.